Okay, welcome back to Freedom Crossing, chapter number seven. The slave catchers come. Dun, 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 dun. Not helpful. Deeply upset by the scars on Martin's back, Laura went up to her room. Leaving him still at work in the pantry, she took out her needlework and sat on the rocker by the west window. She was sewing a ruffle on the bottom of a green cotton dress to make it longer, for she had decided it showed a little too much of her ankles. But she was not thinking of so of her sewing. Her mind was in turmoil over the happenings of the past few hours. Turmoil? Her mind was in turmoil over the happenings of the past dun 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 okay turmoil is on page 51 what do you think turmoil means yeah I would go with confused or like upset So, like, when my brain is in turmoil or I'm in turmoil, I'm thinking about it constantly. It's like that tornado we were talking about yesterday in your head. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And you're just like, ugh. It seemed that her world was turning upside down. At Uncle Jim, she had, only, she had seen only gentle treatment of slaves. His slaves were never beaten, and if they were ill, Aunt Ruth cared for them. What? Okay. Um, his slaves were never beaten, and if they were ill, Aunt Ruth cared for them as if they were her own children. Laura wanted to believe that all plantation owners were as kind as the Montgomerys. But Martin's scars were proof that this was not true. Perhaps, she told herself, he was lying and had been beaten because he had done something bad like stealing yet even that wouldn't be a reason for so cruel a beating besides she believed martin had told her the truth as she puzzled she rocked furiously and her sewing lay in her lap the clock on the front stairs landing chimed nine so martin showed up at twelve thirty, or that's when laura got woke up um, about 8 o'clock they got up for breakfast, now it's 9 o'clock. The slave catchers had had time to get a warrant to search the house. Since no one had appeared, Laura tried to convince herself they had decided not to come. At any rate, Bert was outside watching the road, so he would stop anyone who approached. But every time a dog barked or hoof beats sounded on the road, she stiffened in alarm. She wondered if Joel would come this morning. Probably not, for he wouldn't want to draw attention since he attention to their house. She liked his appearance since he had grown up. He wasn't exactly handsome, but he looked to be the kind of person you could trust. It was a pity he had such strong ideas about slavery. Deep in thought, Laura was startled to hear voices in front of the house. She ran to the front window and looked down at a group of men, one of whom wore a sheriff's badge. The bell in the front of the house rang as someone tugged on the bell pole outside the door. The bell pole is like, instead of, instead of like pushing the doorbell and it goes ding dong, this one, you just pull it and it rings something.
Yep, so it could be like a legit bell, and it's just a ding dong or whatever. You actually have a bell pole in your backyard? Um. Then Laura heard the doorknob being tried. It's locked, one of the men shouted. He stepped back and stared at the house. Laura dropped the lace curtain, hoping he had not seen her gazing out. She was horrified to realize that these strangers would have walked directly into the house if the door had not been locked. Again, she wished Prince were alive. He would never have let them enter into the house. The dog, right, Prince the dog? Uh, through the thin curtain, she could see the men talking together, apparently trying to decide what to do next. Bert came around the corner of the house on the run with a, the wide tined fork that he used for digging potatoes still in his hand. Good morning, he called out. The men whirled around. Oh, good morning, Bert. The sheriff caught. <coughs> We've come to look through your house. Hope you have no objection. <laughs> Why did you? Oh, objection. 53, yep. Oh, you have no objection mm -hmm. it does have OBJ in a good good connection so turmoil objection what do you think objection means Okay, so you're trying not to sound rude. So I hope you don't disagree, right? Mm -hmm. I hope you don't disagree. So we've come to snoop through your house. I hope you have no problems with that. Oh, no. uh, I'd have a huge problem with that too. All right. Hope you have no objection. Why did you come, Esper? Laura was amazed at his unruffled manner. You know well enough, one of the men growled. Bert turned to him, and Laura could see the surprise lift on his eye of his eyebrows. She had not guessed her brother was such an actor. The sheriff said politely, We're looking for a runaway slave, and some people think Joel Todd brought him here last night. I heard there was a fugitive around, said Bert. Of course you can search the house. He paused. I got you I guess you have a search warrant. Hold on, let's write it down. It's on page fifty three also. I guess you have a search warrant? Um, I don't know. Let me look it up. I didn't write it as a question last time, but it might be. Nope, it's a period. Like, I guess you have a search warrant? But it is a, it is like a question. Um, what do you think a search warrant means? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So, so a search warrant is like a permission slip. Slip to search and it could be a sur uh, hmm. permission slip to search s e a r so it could be like their permission to search the house it could be a permission slip to search your office it could be a permission slip to search your car or whatever yeah 
Um, and yes, usually the police officer has to go to a judge and the judge has to agree that there is a reason that you should have, that you should search the house or the car or the office or the whatever. Yeah, you know, you you can legally they legally they they legally they have to have a warrant. Now, generally speaking, if you have nothing to hide, you have a couple of options. You can either have them search the house and then they're just done with it and you give them permission to search it, or you can say, "No, sorry, go get a warrant for it." And then they have to prove that they have reason to go search your house. They have to, yep, they have to have the warrant with them and they have to show you the warrant. And if they, well, you know, different people have different opinions. Some people consider it an invasion of privacy because they can literally look through all your papers, all your everything. But if you have, if they have a search warrant, then they can only look for what that's on, what's listed on the search warrant. So kind of one of those things you, you know sometimes it's better to go be done with it at the beginning and sometimes it's just a super invasion of the privacy and you don't want to deal with you don't want them to do it unless they have a judge that agrees that they should that we have said one of the men a young fellow with a crest of black hair i'll bet you're sorry to hear that show him the warrant sheriff don't hurry me waltz the sheriff pulled from his pocket a paper which Bert studied carefully. The men were getting restless. The young man called Walt pushed his face close to Bert's. You know a search warrant when you see one. Now get that door open, Bert said politely. If you wait here, I'll let you in. I only have the key to the back door with me. He fished a large key out of his pocket and held it up for all to see. Since when do you lock the doors when you're working in the garden, Bert Eastman? asked one of the men. Seemed like a good idea with a fugitive loose in the countryside, said Bert, especially since my sister's alone in the house. Walt said, oh, yes, your sister. I heard she came back here from down south. Here she's a good looker, too. Laura blushed, glad she was upstairs behind the curtain. What? How old is Laura? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Laura, Laura Blush, glad. To, okay, what a rough lot those men seem to be. Especially seem to be all except the sheriff, and yet they were acting according to the law, trying to catch a runaway and return him to his master. It was hard for her to remember that last night she had thought it would be best for Martin to be caught and returned to his owner. As Bert started around the house, one of the men called out after him, Not so fast, Bert. I'll go with you just to see that there's no monkey business. Spread out around the house, men, and make sure that darky doesn't climb out of a window. Laura was shocked by the hate in the man's voice. Why, he sounded as if he thought Martin was a criminal. She ran to the spare room. Martin was not in sight. She opened the, sp the wardrobe and whispered, Are you in there? Pulled aside the clothing until she could see Martin's face. His wide, frightened eyes peered out at her. I'm here, Miss Lord. Don't let them catch me. Please. Stay quiet, she cautioned. She closed the wardrobe door tightly and hurried back to her room. Downstairs, the front door crashed open and booted feet sounded on the floor. The cellar first, someone cried out. The men thudded through the house like a herd of buffalo. Thunk, thunk, thunk. Less than five minutes later, the footsteps pounded up the cellar steps and began to travel through the rooms on the first floor. Now and then, Laura heard a crash of a chair being overturned. Standing in the middle of her room with her fists clenched, Laura's anger and fear grew with every passing moment. It is just scary, isn't it? Judging by the, no by the noise downstairs, those men wouldn't miss a corner of the whole house. 
In no time they'd find Martin and take him away. She kept seeing his eyes and hearing his voice begging her not to let him be caught. Someone was on the back stairs running lightly, taking the steps two at a time. Still, Laura could not move. The quick steps hurried down the hall to the spare room. A moment later, they reached her door, and to her amazement, Bert rushed into the room, pulling Martin after him. Without a word, he flung back the carpet and knelt to lift the trap door. A man's voice clear, came clearly up the back stairs. He isn't down here, men. Take the next floor. Bert had the trap door open and was pushing Martin into the opening as the men swarmed up the stairs. Laura heard them go into Bert's room and from there into the attic over the kitchen. Now Bert had the trap door in place and he was pulling the rug smooth while the searchers prowled about the spare room, tapping on the walls and even opening bureau drawers. So they're opening drawers to your dresser. Well, I mean, if they're small, they can totally, yeah, but that would be super uncomfortable. Would you want them to see your underwear? No. Eek. All right. Uh, what did they, what did they expect to find in the drawer? Laura wondered in amazement. The loud voices carried easily into her room. Look under the mattress, one shot said. I heard about a darkie who crawled under a feather bed. The only way they found him, the feathers tickled his nose and he sneezed. Look in that closet over there, said another. Man, that's a dandy place. Look good behind those clothes. Bert pulled Laura's rocking chair in the middle of the room, directed directly over the trap door, and shoved her into it none too gently. So, he commanded. Now the searchers were at the door of her room. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, we're out of time. Shoot. Let's look at, uh, so sorry. Let's look at the questions. You know, let's do. <laughs> Trying to think, I really like all of them. I didn't say that. I said I really like all of them. I can say that if I want to. Yes. Bert, because if she's in the if she's in a chair above Martin, do you think most people are gonna come in and move her off the chair? They could, but they're less likely to, especially being as she's from Virginia. So because she just came from a state and her aunt and uncle had slaves, they're probably thinking she's less likely or more likely to support slavery more likely to support slavery and at the beginning of the book she did right she did well she's sewing because then it looks normal right and if she's not sewing then it looks like it's kind of fishy like why are you sitting in a chair so 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 look like you're doing something she had her sewing out so so Right, so, so in other words, if this is where Martin's cubby hole is, this is where the rocking chair is. And Laura's sitting there, and she's sewing. Yeah. So they got, they got, so Bert flew up the stairs as light as he could. He grabbed, so here's Martin. So he grabbed Martin out of the spare room. And then he came and ran into Laura's room, threw the thing back, picked up the the cover, put Martin in there, put the cover back on, smoothed out the rug, pulled the chair over, put, put her over where Martin would be, and put her butt in the chair and said, now sew. So then, somebody's going to come in and look at her, see her sewing there, 
and hopefully they're not going to what? Search it as hard. Now, they may or they may not. We'll have to wait until Monday. Let's look at questions number. Because I can. Um, two. Let's do two, three, and four. Yeah. All right. We will talk to you later. Bye.